Hi, fifth graders. Today we're going to be um, sculpting the symbol for our lead on our pencil. So you created a plaster pencil sculpture, and now we're going to be creating a sculpture that represents us at the top. Um, it was challenging to paint symbols on this rough surface, so we can really symbolize ourselves with this sculpture at the top. When you're doing your sculpture, you want to think about positive and negative space. For example, this is going to be kind of like a silhouette since we're actually working with polymer clay rather than our... Um, clay that gets fired in the kiln. This is clay that gets fired in the oven. So it is black, um, already colored for you like your lead. And if you were going to do a symbol like I did, I wanted to show that I love art. So I tried to create something of the effect of a heart, like a palette would be. And I wanted this um, brush coming across. Now you have to think of this as a um, symbol that has a lot of positive and negative space. For example, if I was to color all of this in and I just filled all of this in and I didn't have any empty circles or empty holes, it would look kind of like a big blob and I wouldn't see any of my details. So you have to think of a more creative way that we can sketch something on your paper and then sculpt it. So think of a symbol that represents you. I wanted to show that I loved art, so I did create some creative negative space lines in there and then I attached my paintbrush as well and I made it stick out really a lot farther so I could see it. That's why it's sticking out so far. If it was down here in the bottom like this, I wouldn't be able to see it, sorry, at all. If it was just, you wanna think about what you can actually see in this silhouette. So plan a symbol and then we're gonna start sculpting it. When you get your cube of clay, you can note that anything you detach, anything you detach um, is going to stay detached unless you blend it back together. So you do need to blend and push the clay back together. You don't have to score and slip like we did with our other clay um, in previous years, but we do need to blend. So let me think of another symbol that represents me. I'm gonna do a positivity symbol since I like to teach positivity to my students. And I'm going to do some glasses because I think they also create some negative space in there that could be really creative and a heart. All right. And maybe a paintbrush at the top. Cool. Okay. So that's going to be my symbol. I'm going to start sculpting this. Now, remember, um, pencil sculptors or lead pencil sculptors, um, they have to carve everything out from tiny, tiny, tiny pencils. So that's really challenging. Now you can cut this a little bit with either scissors or your pencil by cutting through. It's not as soft as our other type of clay, but you can also twist and turn and mold the clay into what you want it to be. So you can use the scissors. You can also use your pencil to cut. So I just poked a hole in there to create some negative space Oops, for my glasses. If something comes apart, make sure you blend and push it fully back together. At the end of the class, we're going to turn this into a baking sheet where we, I will bring it home and bake it in my oven rather than the kiln like we normally do. So a couple things you can keep in mind um, other than just cutting and sculpting with your fingers is you can do coils for things and you could roll this coil into something like a twisty loop or whatever it may be. Um, so I might do that for my paintbrush actually I'll just but this is kind of where you really rather than when we're working with our other type of clay you're really just molding and sculpting and transforming that clay into something else. So I'm sculpting and molding and transforming. I will have tools like scissors and pencils and even some imprinting tools nearby. For example a marker cap could be used to press a texture in and we also have texture plates I'll get out as well which you can use. Let me show you that. A texture plate could be used to press in a texture into your clay. Press it in really hard. And like that. All right, so my glasses are not yet coming together. I'll try to get those. <laughs> but this will dry very hard, so it feels like it's going to fall apart right now in the state that it's in. But once it goes back into the oven, it will come out nice and sturdy and solid. So this is mine for now. The 
this is mine for now. It's still in progress. I clearly spent more time on this one. So I do want to get into those details. So my paintbrush, I want to kind of make it look like a brush and I'm going to carve out those details. So this is a lot of time for a whole class to spend on one tiny sculpture piece, but this is where you really need to think about detail orientation, the meaning behind your symbol. So we're not just doing any old symbol, we're thinking of something that really represents us. So I have my positivity symbol, my glasses, a heart, which I'm still kind of sculpting out a little bit, and a paintbrush at the top. Um, so at the very top, I'm now finished and I can, once it's all hardened, we're gonna attach it to our clay with um, a adhesive. All right, so have a wonderful art class. Think of symbols that you can think of to represent yourself. Think of positive and negative space. Make sure you're really blending the clay together if it is um, nearby it. So I'm gonna have these little place uh, name tags, you're just going to write your name nearby yours so that I know who's who's. All right, so have a wonderful art class. Um, work hard on your symbols. Um, make sure everything's fully securely attached at the end um, and represent yourself with positive and negative space in a symbol. Have a wonderful art class and I'll see you next time.